If you're anything like me, then you've got a pile of projects lying around that have not been finished yet. In fact, I have a ton of these unpainted kits that I've had for years that haven't been worked on yet. They've just been collecting literally tons of these. This isn't even all of them. Some of these I've had around for more than five years, but there's one thing that I've had for even longer, and that's my Mayroon's Razor Dagger. I made this seven years ago, and I don't have one. It's time to paint this fella. This is a resin casting. The mold was one of the first molds I ever made, so it's a little gnarly. Definitely a bit of a fixer upper. Uh, I've got some little protrusions to get rid of. Uh, I also have some bubbles and voids that'll need to be filled. And the seam in some spots is just a little gnarly. So I definitely have my work cut out for me on this project. This is an example of something that I made as a commission a long time ago, seven years to be exact, that I made and sold and then told myself I was gonna cast one for myself and paint it, and I never did. Well, before this mold died, and it died catastrophically, Brittany got a couple of good castings, decent castings out of it. And that's what I'm working on today, is a casting from the mold that has since gone on to the uh, Reynolds Advanced Materials in the sky. <laughs> a big old gnarly bubble from the mold there I gotta get rid of. This project, uh, when I put it out in 2012, was one of the first ones of mine that the internet really took notice of. Uh, in fact, I remember the artist from Skyrim who made this model for the game commented on my final product and he said that I nailed it. So as far as I'm concerned, that's the only opinion that matters to me. There we go. So long, little friend. Anyway, this project has been on the shelf for seven years and I'm finally finishing it. But I bet you have a project that you've been working on for even longer. If you can beat my record of seven years, let me know in the comments what project you've been working on the longest. The scabbard here needs a little work. You can see I slush cast it so that it's hollow, so the dagger can go in there, but the seam is pretty gnarly. So I'm gonna knock it down as best I can with just a knife here before I come in to sand it. Oh, and if you notice, I have a fancy new knife. Look at that, our branding on it and everything. We're actually selling these now. We got our own knives made, which is perfect uh, because if you're watching this, the end of November in 2019, well then we've got a sale for you. We have a sale going on on our store. I'll tell you more about that in a little bit, but suffice to say, if you want a really nice knife for your foam and prop making needs, we've got them over at uh, punishprops.com. To get some of these really gnarly seams, I'm using a needle file to remove an appreciable amount of material. Uh, but I also have some of these bubbles to contend with. This shininess in there is no good. I wanna put a filler in there, but to get it to bond, I'm gonna rough that up a little bit. And to do it, I have my rotary tool with a little round grinding bit. I'm just gonna go in and rough that up. There, a little tooth for our filler, uh, and then that'll get sanded once I fill it in. To fill in my tiny air bubbles, I'm using a body filler. It's a catalyzed body filler. It's also got uh, polyester in it. Bad to breathe, so I've got well-ventilated area, fan blowing it all away from my face. I'll go put on a respirator too. But first, I'm gonna mix this up with the catalyst and that'll get the reaction going. I should have about five minutes of working time with this filler and I'm just using a metal spatula to fill in any of those holes that I drilled out. I try to overfill it a little bit. I will have to sand a lot of that away, but it's a lot easier than having to mix up another batch of filler. I gave this about an hour to cure fully cured and now I can start the slow process of whittling it down flush, starting with my needle files. My setup for this is to use the needle file to remove the bulk of the extra material. And then I've got my uh, sanding stick here and then 220 and then 400 and then I have a scotch right pad. So I'll go through these grits uh, to get the surface to look uniform between the plastic part and the filler that I put in there. Our shape is coming together here, but now I have my 
uh, nail file to get it a little bit closer to that final shape that I want. I can even go in and kind of round that indent a little bit until it looks correct. And this is still shaping. After this, I'll go to some higher grit sandpaper to smooth everything out. You can even see the very clear edge between the filler and the plastic. And hopefully once we paint that, after I do all the sanding, you won't be able to see that edge at all. So I'll do some 220 there. Maybe go up to 400. If you were really, really picky about the surface, you could wet sand this. You could prime it and sand it a bunch of times. I think this will be pretty good for me. The last step will be to go over it with a scotch bread pad and round over any of the offending edges. That's pretty good. And I'll prime this and we'll see if that's acceptable later. But I have a lot more of this to do on the rest of the dagger. This seam along the handle is a pain, a super duper pain. Uh, my mold never properly registered together on that part. So there was always this weird gnarly seam. So I'm going in with a uh, square file, little needle file here and knocking that back. I'm also trying not to just flatten these areas. So as I'm removing the seam, I'll go around the circumference of the handle there so that I, I don't have a big old flat spot there, but I still get rid of that seam. This is the tediousness that is prop making. Got the scabbard here too, that needs a little work. Big gnarly seam down the side of it. Uh, this was a two part mold. Actually, actually it's right here. I still have this one. I've only done a few castings with this mold, which is why it survived. Uh, but this was cast right out of it like that. And uh, it was slush cast, so with the mold closed and nothing in it, like this, the whole thing got strapped together. And then I poured resin down in there and then just slushed it all around until it coated the inside. And that's how we're able to make a scabbard like this that's hollow that our dagger fits into. That is the first round of sanding all done. And I think I wanna do a second pass of sanding on this. But before I do that, I'm gonna hit everything with one layer of primer. I know there are blemishes on here, but uh, they're kinda hard to see. That gray coat over everything will highlight all of my errors. But first, I need a good way to hang this. And there are these little dimples there. That's where I attach these little, uh, little detail bits. Eventually, I will go and put those on there. Uh, these will be separate for painting, but I can drill a hole in there and you won't see it because it'll be covered. Let's go through the other side and see if we can get those two to line up. And then I can feed this wire through. There we go. Now I can hang and spray this at the same time. My kit also had these little fiddly bits that are separate. So I have some double stick tape here so I can put them down and hit them with a little bit of primer as well. Uh, there's also this kind of big part that goes on the scabbard. Oh, there's also this tiny little part that goes in the middle of the oblivion symbol. There we go. My primer's all dry and I'm just looking over everything, looking for small blemishes that I missed. And sure enough, there are a couple, some little uh, tiny air bubbles from the casting. Uh, those will need to get filled in and sanded. And then along the seam, there's a couple of spots that need a little bit of cleanup too. So I've got my spot putty. I'm gonna fill those in and then you guessed it, I'm gonna do some more sanding. I got the surface texture to where I want it, and now I'm gonna add a little extra. The uh, recess here in the blade, there is a little texture in there, but I want a little more. And then all the flat spots here on the scabbard, I wanna have just a little bit of texture. And I'm gonna do that with this PVA. It's just a water-based air drying glue. 
I'm gonna brush it all over everywhere and when it starts to set up, I can stipple to leave a nice texture. I put some masking tape down because this part I don't want any texture on. And I'll be careful with how I apply this, but you know, you might, oh, accidentally get some on there and then the masking prevented that from happening. You can see as I start applying it, it's leaving a really cool texture, uh, but that'll soften as it dries. So I'm gonna come back in later when it is sort of tacking up and, and stipple it again to kind of have a sharper texture. So I'm not too worried about that right now, mostly just covering and spreading it out. While I'm working on this, I figure, good time to remind you that we've got a wonderful sale going on over at punishprops.com slash shop. Of course, it's always a good time to head on over there and see what we have available. Uh, but this weekend is Black Friday weekend and we always have a sale all through the whole weekend. And we have some fun new stuff in this store that we figured you guys would really appreciate. We have our new knives. Actually, I have one here. New knives in this store. Very excited about these with our logo on them. I think they look really fantastic. Uh, they're bright orange, which is not only our color, but it's easy to see in the shop when you're trying to find it in the recesses of your dirty workspace. We also have a ton of really great digital stuff. All our books are available in digital forms. Uh, we have the Punished Pack though, that's the, the good one. It's uh, the two current Foamsmith books with a bunch of extra stuff. And this weekend only we're gonna include the basic helmet pattern and the basic shield pattern, both digital. You can print at home. Those are all included in the Punished Pack this weekend only. So head on over there and check that one out, especially if you're just getting into this and you want a great place to start. Those books are designed exactly for you. We also have our new head form pattern. If you're looking for a gift for a cosplayer friend or for something for yourself, if you wanna maybe make a helmet stand or something, you could get the head form pattern and make as many head forms as you want. Again, all over at punishprops.com slash shop. And especially this weekend, you wanna head over there and get a deal on all of the wonderful stuff that we've got available just for you. Our PVA is all dried and it dries transparent, so it just looks gray now, which is fine. I can peel this off and everything else stayed smooth, but now I have this cool texture down there. A little little something extra. That looks pretty good. We can see the, the difference between the textured part and the nice smooth part. Uh, now I think I can go prime these, the last round of priming before paint. My primer is all dry and I'm really happy with how this turned out. The texture on here I think is gonna be really nice later when we sort of call it out with some, maybe some dry brushing. Uh, there are two primary colors for this whole kit here. There's like a darker metallic, uh, which is what we're gonna start with. I have a gunmetal paint here. Uh, and then the rest of it is just a brighter metallic and I have a silver for that. So we're gonna airbrush those in a couple of layers with some masking to get the effect that we want. Starting by covering these two pieces with our gunmetal. It's time to do a little work on the pommel and I wanted to do something fun. It looks kind of like a marble in the game, uh, like a marble coloring, uh, but I wanted something fancy. So I did some paint tests on some Easter eggs here, trying a couple different combinations and layers of paint. And I think I'm gonna go with this one here. And the good news is I know exactly every step I need to take to get to this finish. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do on my finished pom on the real deal. Uh, if you wanna know more about uh, this process, we actually covered this in an extra credit club video. If you're not a member of the Extra Credit Club, we have a link down below where you can go join and get access to a bunch of exclusive content. We do vlogs every week and we do a build update discussion every week on whatever project we're working on, including this one, as we make our way towards finishing it. Uh, anyway, I know because of the notes that I took right here that the next step is black. So I'm gonna head back over to the airbrush, spray on that layer. I masked off just the pommel. I'm gonna paint the whole thing black. This part here will eventually be painted over, so it doesn't matter that it's black, but I, I don't wanna get any black on the spots that I want to stay that gunmetal. 
I want to add some veins to make it look more like marble. So I'm using this silver paint and I only need just like a teeny tiny amount. Uh, and I'm going to thin it a ton. So I have just, just the whiff of paint. And then I have my thinner here. I'll mix that up so that there's really just a tiny bit of pigment suspended in all that thinner. So we have a really thin paint and a really tiny brush so that I can just add a little bit of sparkle in some thin lines. And I'm just eyeballing where, where these are kind of going there and drawing in some little veins of marble. I mixed together a combination of paints. I made this very thin with a lot of water. I want it to be pretty transparent, but add a little bit of a sparkle and a little bit of purple starting here and kind of fading out as it goes down. So I've got it all mixed up and I'm gonna just apply a little at a time and try and sneak up on it. That looks great. I can let it dry. And while it's drying, I can start masking for the next layer of paint. I'm gonna have a brighter silver going on uh, this part here. So I'll mask all of that off. I also have a ton of masking to do on the, the handle here and some more on the blade. This part needs to stay the same color. This is the part that's gonna get painted. So my masking tape goes over here, right along this line. These straight edges are easy, but around here it gets a little more complicated. It goes in there and I like using something soft to persuade that down into the, the crease. And then I can take a nice sharp knife and trim it. And it's okay if the knife digs into the plastic a little bit because that part will never really be seen. In fact, we'll put some paint on to weather this and that'll fill any of those little cracks right in. There we go, that looks pretty good. Come in with my cotton swab and there we go. Of course, every other band on this handle is a different color, so. I covered the whole thing in tape and now I'm just trimming out every other line like that and then I Hopefully can just peel this out. There we go. Ah, very nice. Paint is dry and we can carefully remove our masking tape. All the time it took to put these on, and I can just scrape them right off. But the work was worth it, because that looks great. Oh, this big guy is awesome. Look at that. Ah, oh, worth all the extra work. All of the really tedious work is done. Now it's time for some fun. Actually, before I get to weathering, even though it's what I really want to do, I'm going to clear coat all of this and protect all the work we just did. Uh, I think for this one, aqua gloss is a good clear coat. It should preserve all the nice metallic sheen we have going on here. We are just sprinting to the finish line now. I want to make the gem in here this glossy. It's clearly not as glossy. This is a two-part, five-minute epoxy. It does take longer than five minutes to fully cure, but it's still pretty quick. I'm using an old paintbrush to apply this. I'll throw it out when it's done. This paintbrush has seen many projects and this is his last one. All I'm trying to do here is put on a nice even coat. I wanna make sure there aren't any spots that I miss. When I did my tests, I noticed that there are a couple little spots that I definitely miss. So I'm just trying to be thorough here. And uh, even if there's like brush strokes and stuff in it, those will go away later. I'm not too worried about that. Oh, if you're new to the channel, if this is the first video you've seen, then you owe it to yourself to hit that subscribe button. We put these videos out regularly and we have a lot of fun doing it and you definitely don't wanna miss when we have a new one. Uh, go ahead and hit the bell too, that's the best way to make sure you get notified when we have a new video out. That's where it is now after only just applying the, the uh, epoxy. I'm gonna hit it with a heat gun and that should warm it up and level it out a little bit. Uh, if there are any tiny bubbles, which I don't see any, but if there are, it'll pop those too. 
That looks pretty fantastic. Uh, I'm gonna set this somewhere where it can cure fully without me touching it. So I'm gonna let it be for about half an hour. While that pommel is curing, I can attach these parts to the, the scabbard. Um, I'm just laying everything out so that I have a pretty good idea of where it's gonna go. Uh, this fella here is pretty big. Uh, it might get bumped with these wingalings sticking out the side. So I'm gonna sand this and this a little bit so the glue has something to grab onto. Whew. Let's just sand this wonderful finish that I got. Oh, it's painful. But I'm chewing down to the plastic so that when I glue that to the back of here, where I'm also gonna sand, the glue will be grabbing onto both this plastic and that plastic and not the paint between them. And that should provide a stronger bond. Uh, these little pieces down here, I'm probably not gonna sand. I'll probably just glue them right down in the paint. It's unlikely that those will fall off. But this big guy needs a little more help. And I will put some like on the, the paint as well. Every little bit should help. Ooh, before I stick it down, just look at a reference image. So I have a Google image search here of some references. And in fact, that one, let's go with this one because that's one I made seven years ago. And I can kind of see where everything is placed there. I'm gonna put a little bit on here as well to help that end stay down. There we go. Pretty lined up and it looks like I got it. Good enough for a Daedric God anyway. It wouldn't be complete without its oblivion symbol. So let's glue this guy down. And then this teeny little piece. I have a pair of tweezers for that. There we go. And I put heat shrink tubing on the end of this pair of tweezers so that it won't mar whatever it is I'm grabbing. It also helps grip these tiny pieces. And then when I squeeze this, it'll let go. There, look at that. Ta-da. <laughs> These little fellas need to be attached to the little spikes that go around the uh, pommel. And I'm gonna glue them, but I wanna put a little pin in there so it's got some mechanical uh, key that holds it in place along with the glue. This is just a piece of wire. It's actually the wire I use to hang up the dagger for painting. And I can insert these into these little spikes and insert them into, oops, into the dagger. I just need to drill a tiny hole partially through it. Carefully too, I don't want to drill my fingers. <laughs> and then I'll just put a little bit of glue in there and then put one of my little pins in there. Nope, you stay in there. There we go. Clean that up a little bit. I'll let that fully cure and then we can install it on the pommel. Of course I need a hole to install it. This will go in there. I'm gonna put glue on this part. I have some of this super glue accelerant and you wanna be careful, it can strip your paint. So I'm just gonna put a little bit right in there. Boop. And then when I push this in, not upside down in the correct way, it should cure just about instantly. So I wanna make sure it is nice and straight up and down, and it is, and that is in there. And I can do the rest of them. Now when the user holds this, they'll be guaranteed to stab their hand on this spiky thing. I don't know why it's on there. Those Daedric Gods have no consideration for ergonomics. <laughs> We've got these water mixable oil paints for doing my weathering, and I do want to weather this a lot. This uh, artifact has been kicking around Skyrim for a long time, and you know it's got all kinds of dirt and grime all over it. I'm gonna imagine this thing has spent some time like underwater somewhere for like a few years, and then someone went and discovered it and had to clean it off. That's kind of the story I'm telling myself in my head. So imagine this is like a bunch of mud and then someone was like, oh, look at this legendary weapon I found in a lake. I should clean it off a little bit. But they're not great at cleaning it off, so they left it pretty dirty, which is what I'm gonna do. But what's left down in the crevices helps tell that story that this thing is an artifact that's been around a long time and 
picked up a lot of grime. I think that'll do it for the scabbard. That is good and grimy, especially when you compare it to the fresh and clean dagger. While I'm working on this, I'd like to remind you that we have a sale going on on our website right now for Black Friday for the whole weekend. We have a bunch of new stuff in the store like those cool knives that we just got in stock. We also have a bunch of discounts on things this weekend. So if you're looking for gifts for the favorite cosplayer in your life or a little something for yourself, head on over to punishprops.com shop. Take a look around, see what we have for you and treat yourself. Cause you know what? You've earned it. This is all clean and that's all dirty. It's amazing how the oil paints actually make it look more metallic than just the bare metallic paint. Ah, oh, so good, so good. The very last step uh, is gonna be a little bit of rub and buff. This texture I have, I really like it and I want to sort of call it out. So I have a little bit of rub and buff on my finger there and I want to very gently just graze that texture, just try and hit the high spots to call out that texture. So we have that sort of medium tone of our base color. We have the darker tone of our weathering paints. And then we have this lighter tone here. That just adds a little bit of visual interest to the whole thing. And I think it looks awesome. A little goes a long way with this rub and buff though. I actually practiced on the back first and it looks okay uh, before I committed to the front. The edge right there, I wanna get a little extra on that too. Playing a subtlety game here. That should do it. Look at that. In the scabbard. Oh, it's perfect. <laughs> oh, there is one more thing to do, of course. Uh, we're gonna need to make a sacrifice. Uh, oh, uh, yeah. To Mehrun's Dagon. Now it's done. Oh, there's another hair. Ah, I got it all over me. I should wear gloves. Grab a, just a little bit of thinner here. And then let's, oops, didn't get any. <laughs> and of course, it's plugged. Got my oil mixable, oil mixable thing. Really? This is worse. <laughs>